Howdy everybody, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Fab Five campaign here on the Random Rhapsody Network. I'm Matthew R. Dawson, your friendly neighborhood host and GM, and here and joining me at the virtual table today are Alyssa, Joe, Jeremy, Coins, and Kyle. Say hi everybody. Hi everybody. Hi everybody. <laughs> now, before we begin, I'm going to remind everybody that our very first Halloween one-shot is coming up in about two months. Um, it's going to be the very first ever one-shot we're doing here on the Random Rhapsody Network, and it's going to be run by our very own Alyssa Egan. Bree and John from the Debauchery Circus are going to be playing alongside me, Coins, and Joe from the Fab Five. The stream will be airing on Monday, October 25th, and it'll be up on YouTube Halloween night. So be sure to subscribe and follow both. Okay, that's it for announcements, I promise. So join us now as we dive into the world of Laropa and continue on with the adventures of the Fab Five. And we're back. So when we last left off, the Fab Five had reunited with Eloise's adopted father through a series of events which started with blood from a stone shooting the Goliath druid out of the sky. Fortunately, Eloise was there to smooth things over, though between Apollyon and the zombie riding Veil, vale, he definitely was suspicious of the group. Be that as it may, the group decided to camp down for the night so that Eloise and her father could catch up and discuss all that had happened to the Dragonborn after leaving their glade. Eloise spent much of the evening talking to the Goliath, recounting her adventures to him, and as the discussion turned towards the injured Liam and the accursed, the accursed Apollyon, Apollyon grew tired of everybody saying something was wrong with him, and he even went so far as to shove the druid away when the Goliath tried to examine him. To further prove his case, Apollyon tried to cast Charm Person on Blood from a Stone, who resisted and fired off a warning shot in reaction. Eventually, the two druids managed to calm the group down once again, and the group spent an uneasy evening beneath Vale's dome. The next day, Vulcan offered to help the group reach Bradfordshire, and cut down the travel time through a mixture of wild shaping and polymorph. The five readily agreed, and as the sun was beginning to set, the group finally arrived at the gates of the small Mesa village. What they found, however, was a ghost town, broken and obviously under siege. The Fab Five moved into the city to investigate, and, and while the, the group stuck together, Apollyon branched off on his own. The group spotted a small group of spectral-like beings, wraiths specifically, <laughs> moving through the open plaza of the town. While the squad was about to ambush the creatures, unfortunately Apollyon stepped into their line of sight and was spotted, and the creatures moved in to attack. In the end, our heroes stood victorious against the wraiths, but the group was left with lingering concerns on their minds, as Blood from a Stone could see quite a few more of the creatures moving about the town from his perch on a rooftop. And so, Fab Five, you are all standing in what appears to be the remains of a marketplace. You are all standing around what appears to 
be what's left of three stalls that seem to have been torn apart over the course of many battles. There's trampled on and rotting produce strewn about the ground, broken bits of pottery and glass all over the place, and quite a few dead bodies. In your immediate area, you can see four of them in various states of decay. The one closest to Eloise, Vulcan, and Liam seems to be the freshest at only a few days gone, while the others anywhere from a week or two at rough estimate. Blood, from your perch up on the rooftop, you can see another pair of those blue wraith-like creatures rounding the corner into your field of vision about two blocks down, moving away from your party at this current moment. As you all consider what to do next and what your next move is going to be, a question comes to each of your minds. And that question is, what does your character want to be remembered by? And Apollyon, since you rolled first, what do you want to be remembered for? Well, I'll always be the people's champion, so I want them to see that golden shining belt and always remember the golden boy. Ah, that golden shining belt, which is currently uh, around a particular half-dragon's waist. Hey, hey, don't remind me. I'll get it back. We're going to go clockwise clockwise around the table. So, Liam, what does your character want to be remembered for? There's something I've wanted to be remembered for for quite some time. The greatest villain in all the land. You try the Ken Kubland. It'll really help you see better at night. I'm no joking here. This is the type of beer you want to have. Come on down, Liam's wagon. (laughs) <laughs> I like it. I like it. Uh, uh, vale, you're next. Vale's looking at uh, these four bodies, and he kind of realizes, um, you know, he wants to be remembered for being the smartest, most powerful necromancer that ever walked the surface of the Ropa. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, those bodies are definitely tempting. They're right there out in the open. Eloise, how about you? really I don't know I don't really care if I'm remembered or not I just want to leave the world hopefully better than when I found it that's a good thing to want to be remembered by I like it blood from a stone your last uh, I don't really care what the greater Laropa might remember me by but I'd appreciate it if my people would remember for me for uh Maybe trying to restore some of the honor that the Tabaxi that the elves have taken from us. I don't know how I'm going to do that, but just something to make our standing better in this world. I like it. Okay, everybody. As I said, you're in this town's uh, little open market square. Directly to your north um, is the building that Liam had dipped into, which he did see was a empty and rather torn apart uh, inn or tavern. The rest of the buildings seem quiet and empty, and while there are windows that you can kind of see through, some of the curtains are drawn, others aren't. Some windows are broken. Some doors are broken as well. Definitely seems like a pretty big battle has gone on in this area. But, Fat Five, what do you want to do? Uh, first thing I'd like to see if any of these dead bodies are our monks. Okay. Um, Before he touches the body, I just want to get my, uh, my zombies out of the hole. Okay, so you're, uh, Liam, you're going over to start looking at the bodies to see whether or not, um, you recognize any of them. Um, just at a glance, I can tell you that none of them... Um, are wearing any monk's robes that you can see. Um, but if you wanted to look closer at to see if you can identify who they are, you could do that. Uh, no, then I just want to go in the tavern and see if there's some jerky. Okay. okay. Um, vale, you are sitting down your portable hole, probably uh, against the side of one of the buildings over there nearby. You could probably do that on the side of this building, or one right there if you wanted to do that. 
Alright. Blood wants to start checking out stalls and places for a uh, jeweler or some kind of maybe even a pawn shop of some kind. So you're looking at the stalls to see... If the stalls, the buildings, to see what kind of businesses are around. And maybe, I guess, he could even start looking as a secondary thing for uh, the symbols that he would know that would denote maybe a, uh, a syndicate shop of some kind. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead and make a perception check. Well, I find this one is with me. It's only a 10. Well, uh, Liam, if you're heading into the the, um, the tavern to start looking for stuff, you can go ahead and make a perception check as well. Blood from a stone with your ten, you do note you do notice that there is the tavern there to your left. This, the the um, stalls themselves seem to be the kind of things that people put up and take down every day, and you're not seeing any markings on anything like that. The buildings to the south of you just seem to be more residential or one looks more like a, an office for uh, town guards just a simple barracks you're not seeing anything that gives you any indication of you know that are thieves markings at, per se the one over here you see a lot of broken pottery and a lot of broken, broken glass a, a, a few odds and ends that kind of give you the idea that this was probably some type of pottery shop itself the one over here has wooden casks at one end, all broken open. There's a little bit of liquid at the bottom of them, but they seem pretty well smashed in. The one in the middle has has fabric all ripped about. Possibly, you, you kind of discern probably like clothes, things like that. But that's about mm-hmm. it. Okay. Do any of the bodies seem to be like guards or military or fighter type people? Go ahead and make a perception check, and Liam, with your, with you looking in, yeah, you looking in the tavern, um, you you do go up to the bar and you kind of look around, and there are smashed glasses and bottles, and ceramic plates and things of that nature. You do find with a twenty-three a bottle that it has not been broken at the bottom underneath the bar, and you lift it up, and it's a very lovely bottle of um, rum. That's all do. And I'll see the skeleton over there, and I'll motion the skeleton to come and take a seat. So, Apollyon, what were you looking for Control with your... your I rolled a four, so not much. But I was just looking to see if any of the bodies looked like they were the town guards or some sort of fighters or military. Um, I'm going to say that you can, just looking over them... None of them are wearing armor. You don't see any weapons in the area. Most of them are dressed as though they're just people going about about town. Some of them, like this one over here, looks nicer in, in outfit than, say, this one over here. But for the most part, none of them seem to be like they're fighting, fighting type. Has anyone searched the bodies yet? Uh, I guess while everyone is um, kind of scattering, I'll I'll poke around and see if there's... Uh, anything with the bodies or yeah you could definitely do that and Vulcan is actually there with you and so you can roll for advantage doing a medicine check on these what are you trying to determine specifically are you trying to to figure out what's what's on their bodies or are you trying to determine how they die let me ask you that first a bit of both like are, are like were they outfitted for like did it look like they were like kind of like a hastily just like what they could find to try and give themselves some sort of like uh armor or shielding so that they could fight or were they caught off guard like did are there okay. any defensive wounds that I kind you. of situation so that's going to be an investigation check okay is it still at advantage with yes yeah, still at advantage because okay. Vulcan is there helping you okay 17 okay so the person that you're investigating is the one in front of the two of you right now. Mm-hmm. And you're looking him over. And he he seems like he's a shopkeeper of some kind. He, he has a, the, those very standard, you know, work pants, um, open vests, and, and that sort of thing. He does have a pouch on his belt. 
and a dagger as well, or at least a dagger sheath on his belt. The dagger itself is nowhere to be seen. Okay. The belt pouch itself, when you pull it open and look, you do find um, 45 gold pieces and 17 copper pieces. You also find a small key. Small key. A small key. It's literally like it's the size of your palm. It's very tiny. I just find all the keys, don't I? How many keys does that take? Key from shot keep. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Okay, and I'm sorry, you said 45 gold and what copper? 45 gold and 17 copper. I'll also tell you that you do notice that this man has a very large uh, ruby ring on his third finger of his left hand. It's a gold ring with a ruby about the size of your thumbnail. He also has a, uh, a very beautiful jade brooch on, his, um, on the, the inside of his tunic, just like a, above his neckline that, he's, that he wears as well. Okay. Seems to be at least decently well to do. Yeah. Um, I guess I'll grab those just in case, you know, maybe they have magical properties or something and Vale can check them out because I know that I'll get yelled at if I don't. <laughs> um, and, um, yeah, but what about, what about like his wounds? Did they yeah. look like he was caught? By surprise, or are there so some like the, defensive wounds? The wounds themselves, you can definitely see some defensive wounds on the hands and arms. You can see slash marks on both of them, um, fairly wide, widely cut. You would guess a, a decent sized blade that did this. Um, the killing blow was from the back and just right along the back of this guy's spine. And you can actually see the opening side part of that and look down, and you can see bits of the bone from the cut it's deep does it, okay does it look like it could have come from the wraiths from like how they were fighting us or you did well um who got hit by the blip by the wraiths uh, nobody really yeah. nobody really nobody they swings really. they just kept <laughs> missing, <laughs> missing yeah so you do know that they were wielding swords mm-hmm. and you do these wh- blades do seem consistent with a blade Okay. I did catch one of their ghost arrows. Yeah, I suppose you did. Okay, so it looks like this guy was probably attacked by one of the wraiths. It's a reasonable assumption. Okay. Unless, Unless this place the- got like attacked by bandits at the exact same time wraiths were about, yeah. it's probably a g- <laughs> it, it's it's reasonable to assume. Okay. okay. Is there any remains of of the race that we defeated? There are not. When once they dissolve, they dissolve completely. There's there's no vapor, there's no dust, there's nothing. Okay. What's down this alley over here by where I am? Let's see. Checking down the alleyway, it appears it goes on for about another 60 feet or so before it comes to the wall of of the town this you're at the very edge the of of the town right here oh okay uh they'll walk up here with the uh, towards our lease with the zombies and and kind of uh inquire as to what she found on them on this guy um, I'll show him the ring and the brooch. And I just can't hold my hand out. I don't think right now is the best time to, to do any identify rituals, Vale. And I, and I scoff at her and I say, who said anything about identifying them? And I continue to hold my palm out. The moment you uh, you approached, by the way, Vulcan, when he looked up, he just did one of those, ah! Shit! Kid! <laughs> You need to, oh. you, you need to announce yourself when you're coming close here. These things are just, they are off putting. When did you pull them out? Uh, you gotta just, you, you'll, you'll learn to either smell them before they arrive or hear the creaks of their bones and 
You won't be startled much the more you hang. Well, you did it just now, Atha. Did you, didn't you not see? He went I, over by the wall. I was looking at the body with you, Dragonfly. Uh, you're... <sighs> I, I'm... 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 Ve- Vale, you are just... You are a bit much. And he, he smiles and gives him that thank you. He's very book smart, though. <sighs> I'm but sure. But only about certain subjects. <laughs> Shame you're not more book smart about these cusses, because... Quite difficult. Yeah. I'm looking into it. And uh, my hand's still outstretched, waiting for Eloise to hand me the brooch and ring. So, uh, Vulcan grabs your hand <coughs> and uses it to pull himself up. And his his <laughs> hand is, like, twice the size of yours. He's huge. You're, you're a scrawny little half-elf, and this is a yeah. guy that's uh, seven foot eight. And yet he Big just... Alive. He gives you this this whole show of... And actually, when he pulls you, you probably stumble forward at least a step. Just a step, because he's not, like, pulling hard. But he, he takes yep. your hand and uses it to lift himself up and stands there. And he just kind of shakes it a moment and says, Well, thank you very much, Vale. I appreciate your help. Why don't we check out these other bodies and see if we can figure out what's going on with them? Uh, Vale's just... His, his eyes are wide... His mouth is agape, just in awe that he's almost disgusted that uh, a Goliath had actually <laughs> touched his hand. And he, you know, kind of wipes it on the zombie a little bit. And uh, as, a, as, he's, <laughs> as he's walking with Eloise to the next body, he casually, nonchalantly uh, scoops the body into the portable hole. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I am glaring. Uh, if 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 like dagger eyes were a thing that could happen, he'd be bleeding right now. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Vulcan does kind of lead all y'all over to that next body. And you're looking at it as well, and just just. To, for the sake of expediency, if you guys spend the next ten minutes looking around between uh, Vulcan, Eloise, and uh, and Vale, you do f- manage to find about 120 gold pieces, 53 copper pieces, and 20 silver pieces, right, including the 45 that I found. Hang on. You said Most- another 120, so that would make 165 gold. How many silver and copper? Sorry. 40. What did they say? 45 copper and 27 silver. Sounds about right. Let's go with that. Okay. 45 plus the 17. Okay. Two of them have just basic daggers on them. Not the other two don't have any weapons whatsoever. You do find another gold amulet and a silver ring on the old woman down here's uh, uh, ring, ring finger. You do find these things. Vulcan doesn't touch them at all. He, he'll take he'll takes the gold and tosses it over probably to Vale just to be a dick. But he leaves the ring alone. And he kind of looks at the rest of them and he says, Yep, pretty much the same. All died by the sword. But none of these bodies what? have been moved. You can see the blood splatter. You can see all the signs that they just dropped. Why hasn't anybody come to get them? Well, I mean, if the racer, with the race still walking around, that would be probably more dangerous than most people could handle, but what brought the wraiths here? Why? He kind of looks around to everybody else. <laughs> Liam, you're still in the bar. What have you been up to? Um, I'm going to save that until someone comes and finds me. Sorry. I'm just going to be chilling with the skeleton for a little bit here. Okay. Just sharing a drink with the skeleton. I like it. Absolutely. That's exactly what we're doing. Yeah, I've got... Just wait till somebody finds me. Yeah. 
Um, uh, are you like doing? You're just sitting there. You're not looking around or doing anything else beyond that. No, just hanging with the skeleton. Chill. I like it. <laughs> Live your truth, buddy. Once we're done looking at most of the the bodies, um, I think I would look around at the shops, see if there's an apothecary around, and then, um, but also like try to see if. I can identify. I can figure out where the the one shopkeep whose small key I have. <laughs> well, as I already described, to blood from a stone. Other than the three shops in, in front of you, most of the buildings in the immediate area don't look like they're they're shops. Like down here, yeah. this seems to be a barracks of some sort. This is just appears to be residential. This you're not entirely sure. It just seem it's just a building with a door. Over here is a tavern, and, and, from, and the farther down you can see a lot more buildings along the route. But it, without actually starting to walk around and going to each of the buildings, it, it's hard. You, you don't see anything that gives you a sign that there's an apothecary or anything like that in the immediate surroundings. But also, the key doesn't like have a address on it or anything like yeah. that. It's just a key. Itself. So, so, I mean, it, w without going beyond where you guys are currently just standing, because like I said, you're still just crowded out in the middle of this uh, little market place here. Okay. Right. Well, then, uh, knowing Liam, I'm going to check the, uh, the tavern here. And to go and ask him, I'm going to kind of poke my head in. And as you poke your head in, you see Liam and the skeleton take a shot together. The skeleton's shot glass is broken by now because he keeps jamming it on his teeth. <laughs> but uh, Liam's telling the joke, so he goes, oh, yeah, I, tell you, I got one for you. So I grilled the chicken for three hours, and he still wouldn't tell me what you crossed the road. <laughs> oh. <laughs> What's up? You're you're familiar with Bradfordshire, little, right? I've been here before. Okay. Um, do you have any idea where we might find um a jeweler or an apothecary or anything like that, so we can try to get you and, yeah, and talk? Yeah. yeah. Most likely, try the Clerics Tower. They're probably guarded from these damn things anyway. Probably the only safe place in the whole bloody town. Oh, okay. Well, where where would that be? Then I'll um, I'll exit and I'll start leading them in the direction of the clerics tower, I guess, because it's out here. Time. While everybody else was inside, I went around the back of the building to see if there was any more any more race. Okay, I like it. You walk, you walk around the side of the building, and you enter into a bit of a back alleyway. There's a few more buildings um, you can see here and here. All the windows are shuttered and dark. The doors are locked, uh, or at least closed. You can't see beyond that. Um, the alleyway goes down about another 30 or 40 feet or so, tees off a bit and then continues on. You don't see any wraiths or anything like that. Um, Do I see any sign of, like, struggle or anything out of place? You, It's actually fairly clear and quiet back here. Um, there is something at the edge... Let's see. Yeah, just at the edge of your vision, you can see a small pool of blood right about here. Alright, I'm gonna go investigate that. Moving over and stepping into that alleyway, you do see another body. I don't have it on the map, but there is a, another body here and another body back here. All of which seem to have been dead for quite a while. Okay, I'm gonna go to the first body and start, just search him. See if he's got anything. Make an investigation check. Uh, 
I will probably use my net 19s to find whiskey. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Technically, it was rum. Yeah, you actually don't find anything on this person other than a simple wooden club that was hidden in his uh, vest pocket. Hmm. Okay. It's more like a jack. You know what a jack is? Just a, a, sh- a short piece of wood that's used to club people in the head. Yeah. So does he look like a... Uh, does he look like he was the town guard? No, no, he doesn't. He's actually just wearing uh, plain leathers. Uh, nothing too exciting. Um, he has a cloak about him that was actually cut in half and uh, is currently very bloodied. He appears to be, if you had a guess, probably a thief. Oh, oh ruffian. All right, all right. Interesting. All right, I'm going to go back to the to everybody else and tell them what I found. Okay, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, everyone is kind of he- exiting the the tavern at this point, and Liam's kind of saying, Okay, let me show you the way. And as he does that, Apollyon comes rounding the corner, running as fast as he can, calling out to his friends, but, God, that's horrific. And everyone turns and looks, and... You always for, kind of forget what Apollyon actually looks like at this moment, and every, as everybody turns and looks, it's just like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> well, I need to put the bell on you. I can't even recognize you anymore. We are in a town full of wraith. Stop screaming, please. Guys, guys, I found some more bodies to the north. Maybe they got what they deserved. Well, it seems like they've killed everyone in town. Do you think the entire town decide, deserved that? Don't know. Don't know what happened here. Also, uh, let's remember no, the first thief body. freed you. Are these, um, are these bodies human? Um... Most of them have been human. There's uh, maybe one of them was a gnome. Um, one was a dwarf. That the one that you have found, Apollyon, was a dwarf, but uh, been primarily human. Okay, I'm just trying to put because I'm I'm scooping them in my portable hole. I want to make sure that uh, Bastard. I have the right things. <laughs> hey, waste not, want not. Uh, so, you Vulcan sees you do this, and he's calling. Uh, what? What are you? Why are you dragging those bodies to that hole? What are you doing? And then I look at Vulcan, and I look at the bodies, look at the hole, and then look at my zombies, and I'll say, "What do you think I'm doing?" Now stop that! You don't know what happened to them. You don't know what the co- what what might come of them. You don't even know how they died. Yeah, that's why you guys were supposed to do the investigation check. How'd that work out? Which is exactly why you should leave him alone. Let's just get a step further away from Vale as he can. <laughs> I'm just, uh... Tr- trust me, Mr. Uh, Vulcan, this is, this is better than leaving them out in the cold. And I continue to stuff them in the uh, portable hole. And he... Can I get a clarification question real quick? What happens to a wraith when it dies? Does it just dissipate into nothingness? It did just dissipate into nothingness. It kind of just dissolved down to the ground, and when you went over to look at him, there was just nothing there. So yes, it just dissolves. How many bodies can fit in that hole? There's got to be a limit. Like, all of them. So Vulcan is, like, really conflicted right now, and he's like, Look, I, I'm all for the natural order of decay, but this is not the natural order of things. The natural so order is to... I'd rather see them decompose and be brought back into the earth where they belong. Well, I could bring them back out of the earth where they belong with me. This is not a. This is not a normal thing, and 
These people had rights of their own. I say, uh, I don't know what you're, what you guys do in your Goliath culture, but oh, 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 usually oh. we don't, we don't come in imposing our, uh, our beliefs on other people as uh, half elves. Uh, and this is the way I do things. This is the at, way I've always done at, things. At about, at about that time, when you say you don't impose your beliefs, and you say as elves, you're <laughs> like, are you fucking crazy? It's exactly what you're kind of. Yeah, but you know what? The full-blooded ones are assholes. And well, Vulcan's yeah, going to point right. out. Vulcan's going to point out. Well, aren't you imposing your will on these bodies by reanimating them? You are doing the exact thing you saying shouldn't be done. So, I see it as giving them a new a new life. They, they'd be nothing but decomposing material and matter uh, if I left them the way they are. I'm I'm giving them a purpose in their after in, in the shell that was formerly, you know, a, a, a being. It is just an, a hollow shell that I am reusing and this is what I do. I, I, I hate to be the voice of reason. But, um, is this really the time and place to be arguing about morality? <laughs> that's, an in- that's an interesting point. Because as Vale continues to scoop, we've probably gotten the first two bodies into the hole by now, Vale. And you're, yep. you're working to grab the third and drag the third over to the hole. About that time, um, all of you see to the side of the alley over here, Two more of those wraiths are flying up towards you, alerted by this entire loud conversation. That's kind of what I was thinking. And I need everybody to roll for initiative. Oh. Oh, my character clicked. Hold up. It is. Click your character. (laughs) Click your character. Seventeen prevail. This is why this I, why I never, never make roll roll char- characters. I never roll double digits in initiative. So what's the and point? For, for um Jared. I'd rather never roll double digits on initiative than have the Will Wheaton curse. So you're fine. What's a Will Wheaton curse? You roll like three out of ten of your rolls are going to be ones. Uh, it's more than three out of ten. I think they were like somebody did thing on it. He was like almost a 50% one rate at one point. It was 50% under like a yeah, certain amount. It was, but he's actually, insanely one. unlucky, yes. Yeah, that's the point. What's this, um, this white um, circle around Eloise? Is that a light source? No, that was, um, she had cast, uh, Pass Without a Trace. Oh, yeah. But that was a I while ago, that, so. Yeah, I thought I had taken that off, sorry. I will get that, get rid of that. Um, um. There we go. Uh, uh, I had a question and now it's gone, I don't know. Okay, never mind. Yeah? Oh, okay. um. How yep. long were we able to look around for? You've probably been at this for about 25 minutes or so. Okay. You've, you've been at it for a little while. And um, now that you mention it, the sun is starting to dip down over the horizon. And it is starting to get more dark. You still have a bit of light left. It's not completely dark you left, but it's getting to those reds and oranges. So just so you know. But we are at the top of the turn order. Which is, of course, blood from a stone. I don't know why you have to say, of course. Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, it's always is... such a surprise. We never this know who's going to be at the top of the order. <laughs> it's always me or Liam, usually. Uh, these, is this stall, is like, there any of it that's intact that he could maybe hide from these so things? So, the, these are posts. These are literal mm-hmm. posts right here. Mm-hmm. Okay. This right here is a counter, a closed-off counter, just basically like some boards and like a three-quarters of a box, but open in the back. 
So you could theoretically duck into that and get cover, but it would be kind of difficult. Uh, so he's visible to them right now? In yes, some... he is. Okay. Well, then what he'll do is he's just going to kind of... That's 15, 20, run out, let them see him. Maybe if he can draw them towards him to for everybody to kind of funnel at him. 25, 30, and he's going to use his feline agility to get back here, duck down, do a quick sneaky poo. Yep, those are some casks and barrels that were made as as kind of like a barrier that you could absolutely duck behind. Go for that quick, quick hide of an 18 stealth. See if he doesn't know if it's going to hide around. He'll just pop up and take a shot. Uh, and I guess since we fought him before, can we tell if there's a difference between these two? Or are they look the exact same? I mean, if you want to spend your action uh, trying to determine uh, that, you're welcome to do so. I'll just shoot at the one that looks like it's a little further out. Okay. I'll just do it. You tell me if he had the advantage or if well, not, he did. He did one. have advantage. All right, so twenty-seven for that guy. I'm guessing twenty-seven hits him. Hopefully yeah, definitely hits. It's a guy. <laughs> definitely hits. Shit. Uh, and I didn't call out sharpshooter or special string, so it's just gonna be a regular shot. That is 22 plus 123, and I guess if you're saying he was hidden and he had advantage and they haven't gone yet, uh, Technically, 40 yeah. 46. Technically, yeah. 46 points of damage. Yeah, and then he'll just kind of hang out behind this, and he's going to go up under the buildings and jump from one to the other next, but for now he's done. Okay. Yeah. Which Huge one did you hit? shoot? one that's kind of a little slightly further forward. Okay. So yeah, huge, huge hit from um, from Blood. And he ducks down, hides, jumps up again, and fires at his bow at that one wraith right there. Okay. That's it for his turn. Apollyon, you're up next. All right. I am going to move around here, run up to this one, and going to, uh, yeah, I'm going to attack with, <clears throat> with the trident, trident of fish command, and I will attack recklessly. That's a 26. Definitely gonna hit. For 9 points of piercing damage. And I'll attack a second time. A 14. 14, 14. unfortunately misses. Oof. Alright. Um, and yeah, that's all I'm gonna do. Okay, I like it. That's it for Apollyon. Next up, we come to the Wraith that you just attacked. So, and let's see. Okay, so... Um, since you just attacked it, and it's right there, it's first off is going to use its bonus action, Martial Flurry. It's, um, as a bonus action, the Sword Wraith can make one weapon attack. If it does so, the attack rolls against it have advantage until the start of its next turn. So as a bonus action, it's making one attack with its longsword. And that's a 17 to hit. That does not hit. That will be damage. No, attacks against it has advantage. Yeah, attacks against me have advantage. Oh, that's oh, right. Oh, that's right. Reckless attack. That's right. That's right. Yes. That would have been a 20 to hit. 20 does not hit. Damn. Okay. Beat so, boy. Yeah, that was, that was it yeah. bonus action. So then as its action, it's going to attack as the long with the longsword again. 
And that's a 20 again. So yeah, two swings, two misses at Apollyon the Golden Boy. Woo! Okay. That's it for the, the Sword Wraith. Next we come to Vale. So, what would you going to do? Alright, so Vale is going to um, pull the magic missile, Wand of Magic Missile out and just hit him uh, for one one charge one. yeah one charge of it um does that make sense I just yeah that makes sense so, you just, right? just, so no you gotta click yeah. it three times each time it does one bolt. okay all right that's what i thought okay two three so 11 points of force damage i'm gonna focus fire and i'm going to um also yell to everybody else to focus fire because one is obviously better than you know, f fighting one is better than fighting two. So, so I'm going to do down the more damage one down okay. here. Gotcha. So 11 points of damage to the wraith down of uh, the southernmost wraith. Got it. Yes. And I'm also going to, as a bonus action, command the zombies to attack. Or the All the undead to attack. Okay. Um, so they have 5, 10, 15, 20. Uh, let's see, they've 20 and 10. Hold on one second. Oops. Uh, their movement is 20. Okay. 5, 10, 20. 20. And the um, skeleton will... Um, take one shot at... The same guy that I attacked with the long bow, with or with his short bow. I mean, okay. There's a twenty-three to hit. Yeah, that's gonna hit. And then I just click the short bow button, correct? It's gonna be five piercing damage. Okay, five points of piercing damage from. From that skeleton, and as you watch the arrow kind of arc over and hit it, it does hit it, but not really as much as you thought it would. Okay. Good to know. I make a mental note of that, and is this uh, like a, something I can get in? Uh, um, this it's, stall? Yeah, you could like duck underneath it and get inside of it a little bit. You're going to be kind of cramped and, and crouched, but you can do that. Yeah, alright. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna lay prone, but I will get, you know, down a little bit, just to, um, get out of harm's way, I guess, if anything comes up. Yeah, you can get down and hunker down and get partial cover, or you can get, like, up and inside of it and get full cover. But, like, getting up, and it's like, like, imagine a table that has a, a, an overhead table and then a front and then some legs, so it's like an open cabinet with no doors. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, it does. All right, you know what? I'll do that then. And I will get uh, inside of it. Um, yeah, uh, and that'll be my turn. Okay, I like it. And now that roll 20 is loaded up again, because it's not wanting to work for me today. Um, next we come to Sword Wraith. Let's see here. Yeah, it's looking directly at you, Blood, and you're the one that attacked it last. Let's see. Technically, the skeleton attacked it last. Let's see. So... He did take damage this turn, so yeah, he's going to go ahead and use his uh, Call to Honor ability and summon three more Sword Wraiths to appear right in front of him about, let's see, it creates 1d4 plus 1 Sword Wraith Warriors and an unoccupied space 30 feet away from him. So, oof, that's a three, so four more Sword Wraiths appear. One, two, 
Just like that. I'm gonna go ahead. Let's see. These guys actually move on his turn. First one's going to be attacking Apollyon. Because it's right there next to you. It's gonna do. Let's see. It just appeared, so I'm not gonna let it do its martial fury this time. That's a 13, which definitely misses. That's a miss. These ones are going to move forward and begin attacking the zombies. That's a 10 and an 8, which I now both miss. The last one is moving up towards you, blood from a stone. And that's a 19 to hit. That'll hit. Oh, sorry, I was muted. Um, the 10 and the 8 both hit. Their armor class is 8. Good to know. Okay. So, the zombie... Zombie up top takes 12 slashing damage. The zombie in the middle... takes 7 slashing damage. And Blood from a Stone... you take 9 slashing damage. He'll take 4 uncanny dodge. Okay. Okay, so um, how do you want to do this? Because if, to make things easier, I had them arranged in a group. So uh, if you want to, the top left one is two zombies. The top right one is three. The bottom right one is three. And the bottom left one is three. So Did you want they, me to put them all out there? That's honestly going to get too complicated. Um, just keep yeah. in mind. So we'll use the tokens to represent just whichever one it got hit first and okay. then if it dies then another one is just going to be taking its place essentially. okay so i'll keep i'll keep track of all the um the damage to them yeah. so it was 12, so it, seven, just, nine. yeah yeah just to make it easier whatever the zomb whenever the guys are going to be hitting it's just going to be that first zombie and yep then we're going to work it like that all right okay. perfect i got it all on paper right here right on Okay. He's going to move back a couple steps, and that's going to be his turn. So, Liam, you're up next. Ah, lovely. All right. Suppose I'll move up to here. He's the closest fucker. Pull out my longsword. Take a couple slashes at the arsehole. 22 twice. Beautiful. Yeah, both hit. Yeah, both hit. Uh, 24 points of damage. 24 points of damage, not bad. You slash into this guy twice. He is still up, but you definitely can tell that this misty form is taking damage. Uh, spin around, kick it with my heel, go for an unarmed strike. Ooh, even better! 25's, yeah, gonna hit. That'll be seven. Seven more points of damage. And then I'll mosey on off. Okay. That's it for Liam's turn. Next up we have Jareth. What's Jareth doing? Jareth is going to spend his action um, doing a wide circle to make sure we don't get ambushed from behind while we're fighting. Okay, go ahead and make a perception check with Jareth. Thank you. It's going to be a nine. It's hard to tell. You're not seeing anything moving in just yet, but you never know. All right. Okay. That's it for the um, for Jeff's turn. Eloise, you're up next. I am. Can I move it? Oh, jeepers! Can I move it? I can. 
Um, yeah, there's no way for me to get all of them. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and cast slow on the five wraiths in that square. Um, how many can you hit with slow? Is it the area six. effect? You can hit up, up to six. six. Up to six within a 40 foot square. And, and you're able to choose it. Okay. Then yeah. yeah. Then yeah, absolutely. Here, what I'll is pop the... it in the chat. There you go. What's the saving throw? Is wisdom. That a wisdom? Okay. Perfect. Ooh. Ooh. Oh yeah. Yeah, well, that's all five of them. Yay. So all five of them are now slowed. Yeah, so they have a minus two to their AC. Um, and I think it's dexterity saving throws. They can't use reactions. And they either get an action or a bonus action a turn. Not both. Like it. Yeah. Do anything else for your turn? Um, yeah, because I'm kind of um, afraid because I wasn't able to catch all of them. I only can feel the spell take effect on five of them. I'm going to go ahead and um, just duck behind this wall over here. Yep. I realized I forgot to put uh, Vulcan in initiative. Oh, shit, yeah. So I'm just and gonna go. Yeah. So yeah. I'm just gonna oh, go I, ahead. I was waiting till the end of my turn to say something. That way we went all the way around. Yeah, that's no problem. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and have him go now, just to make it easier. Ah, uh, Vulcan. What does poor Vulcan want to do? I was stuck between this slow and moonbeam, so <laughs> I don't know slow what Vulcan has choice. prepared. Save moonbeam. Yeah, these things aren't, like, too, too tough. He's noticed that we've taken him out relatively easily. So he's like, do I want to waste a spell on this? I got a better idea. Let's see. Hold on a second. Okay. So Vulcan is going to move 5, 10, 15, 20 feet right there, which should be ju just enough. Yes, perfect. Apollyon. Yo. Vulcan looks down at, over at you and kind of like, and you hear him call out, Use this to your advantage, boy! And he is casting... Um... He's going to cast Enlarge on you. Oh, oh, oh. oh, yeah. So with a snap of his fingers and a funny few words, you suddenly increase in size, doubling yourself to be a huge, monstrous minotaur. You now get to do a few things. So, He's yeah. Before. Um... Let's see here. Your, your, size your size doubled in size. Yeah, you're now large. Um, you have advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws. Your weapon um, grows to enlarge and gives you an extra d4 damage to it. So yeah, kind of fun. So there you go. You're now large. Oh, yeah. Get ready to taste the Golden Boy's fury. Absolutely. So that's it for Vulcan's turn. Next up, we come to Blood from a Stone. So what do you do? <sighs> well, he'll kind of stand up and back up, because he can see they're all... Well, if you're backing up, you are getting an attack of opportunity. No, I'm not. Why not? They're slowed. That's right. They don't get reactions. That's right. Uh, you slowed. said this was like a barracks building? 
Yeah, it is a barracks building. You cl kind of climbed up the one side. You don't. There isn't a door on this side, but there are a few okay. windows. That's what he was gonna see if there was like a door. He's gonna see if there's like something in there you can use. But he'll just back up, get a couple feet out, and he's just gonna take a shot right at the one right in front of him that hit him. Absolutely. Uh, and he will go sharpshooter on this one. Da -da -da -da. Oh, it's not supposed to be hit. Well, I mean, it's not gonna hit anyway. Yeah, and definitely not gonna hit it. at that time. Yeah, well, he's still got a little bit of movement, so he's just gonna come over here and duck down behind that. Uh, you said that was kind of like that cabinet with open it, doors. Yeah, it is a bit of cabinet, side. so there, there's some cover, not a lot. Well, it's not that I mean, so 27. Yeah. Okay. Are you gonna line up uh, another shot for the next time around? Sounds good. Apollyon, you are big and you are mighty. What are you gonna do? Taste my wrath! I'm going to, as a free action, switch my weapon and pull out my uh, scimitar of speed. Okay, okay. And start attacking. I'll attack this one on the left first. Do I get advantage because they're slowed? Um, I don't um, think so. I'm just reading. Oh, minus two AC. Okay, sure, whatever. Uh, that's a 13. And unfortunately, a 13 is still going to miss, even with a minus two to the AC. Alright, I'm going to attack. Again. Alright, 25. Definitely going to hit. Ten slashing damage. Ten points of slashing damage on the wraith in front of you. And bonus action attack again. Twenty-three. Definitely hits. Uh, Thirteen points of damage on that 13 one. Thirteen more points of damage. Two slashes with your scimitar cutting into this misty creature. But he is definitely taking damage. Alright, that's all for my turn. Okay. That's it for you. Next we come to the sword wraith that is in front of you here on your uh, left, it would be. All it can do is one attack, which it's doing as a long sword slash. That's a 16, which I know misses. Miss. Okay. Now, Vale, it's your turn. All right, so um, Vale is going to use his bonus action to command the zombies to back up and hold the line. Just these ones. Um, can this area right here is um, that? Are that's they like an actual. No? That's an actual table, so they would have to okay, climb perfect. up on it. So probably not. Okay. Like that. And then, uh, with Vale's action, he's going to... Oops. How do I, um, bring out one of these, uh... You just kind of dra uh, drag it from there over to the okay, board. Yep. I didn't even need to. Uh, 20 foot radius, that's a, a fireball, right? Um, it's your spell, bud. You tell me. Yeah, it is. It just looks weird because it's a circle. <laughs> yeah, um, but, yeah, that's about right. You got rid of my square? I did not. I did. You, did it. Why do you need it up still? It just affects the, the things in it. it it's not, it yeah, doesn't it's remain up. It's an instant okay. thing. Yeah. Sorry. Um, okay, so it looks like just four of these zombies are going to get hit with the fireball. Four of the wraiths, yes. Uh, no, I'm sorry, wraiths. Sorry. Um, and they all have disadvantage on their deck saves. I like it. I'm utilizing that slow spell. 
little yeah, combo. Uh, and it's a good thing you did too, because they all failed. So all of them just with a huge explosion of fire, um, all of them take the twenty-eight points of damage. So yeah. Alien shields his eyes from this blast. <laughs> Had I known that I should have pulled this uh, spell up first, because then I could have kept the zombies where they were, and then had them attack, but it's fine. Lesson learned. So yeah, with a huge explosion of fire, all of those zomb uh, wraiths in that area take massive damage. Two of them just immediately dissipating and turning into nothing but smoke. Two of them still remain. All right, so uh, would I be able to tell if that did extra damage, if the fire did extra, as opposed to when I, I guess last session I told the dead them? And I realized that did not as much damage. As far as you can tell, it just did the. It just hurt them as it should. Okay. okay. I'm done as well. That's it for Vale. Next, we have the Sword Wraith Commander. Yeah, Apollyon, yeah. you are the biggest target. It's going up towards you. All right. It is at first using its martial fury ability, which allows it to make a weapon attack with as a bonus action. So it's going to do that first. And that's a 23 to hit. Yeah, that hits me. Okay. So we so this attack is also going to do an extra 2d8 necrotic damage on the hit. I didn't mean to do that. Okay. I don't know how to take that away. So you take 7... Here, I can move it. I can get it. So it takes 7 points of slashing damage and 12 points of necrotic damage as this uh, weapon just slices deeply into your side, Apolly. Okay, that was its bonus action. action. Ow! As its action, it's taking two more slices with the long sword. That's a 17 and a 22 to hit. 22 hits. Okay, 12 more points of slashing damage to you. No, that one just does regular damage. Okay. Uh, as a reaction, I'm going to say, oh no, you didn't. And cast Hell of no, I like it. <laughs> What's the. Yeah, your spell. It says the spell save is zero. What's the actual spell save? Oh shit. Uh, hold on. Oh yeah, why does it say my spell saves are zero? Uh, it's Warlock, so it should be Constitution. It should be on your spell. Page, All right, so it right. should be 12. It should be a 12? Okay. Yeah. And that's a dex save? Uh, yes. Yep. Okay. That's a 13, so it does Aww. save. Aww. But it does still take some damage, so roll hey, your damage. Yeah. Oh, do I have... Okay, so that's that's it. I don't have it in my um, attack page. Oh, okay. Well, well it should, if, if you just click on the spell itself, it should just work. I'll mess with it later for you. But it's fine. Six points of, of uh, fire damage halved, so three points of fire damage to it. Or, oh, okay. There it goes. It should look like that, right? Yeah, it should look like that. Okay, yeah. so they took three damage.
Okay. That's it for the sword commander's turn. Liam, you're up next. All right, folks. Uh, running up to this one right here. Uh, kind of wish the zombies were still there so I could get advantage, but whatever. Um, still with the long sword. Two slashes. 13 and an 18. The 18 does hit. Eight slashing. Eight points of slash points. damage to the, the sword wraith in front of you. And another spinning kick for 27. Nice. Yeah, that hits. Another eight bludgeoning magical. Ooh, eight points of bludgeoning damage. This guy ain't looking great. Uh, that's all I got for this round, so I'm just going to move on down uh, to about here. Okay. That's it for your turn. Um, next we come to Jareth. What's the owl doing? He's going to do the same thing as before. Uh, do a, a circle and make sure nothing's going to sneak up behind us. So okay. I'll roll the investigation. Yep, go ahead and make... Well, it's a perception check, not investigation. Oh, I'm sorry. Per perception, I'm sorry. But it's fine. Even better, because... I'm a plus one with percent uh, with uh, wisdom, so uh, it is a twelve. So far, you're not seeing anybody else come. All right, that is it. Okay. Next up, we come to Vulcan, who I apparently forgot to put in the right order, but that's okay. Let's see, he's concentrating on that, so he definitely doesn't want to mess up that spell. Um, looks like the one that Liam had hit was is the best target. He creates a small uh, ball of fire in his hands, and he's going to lob it at the Sword Wraith. Shouldn't have been an advantage, but it's still a 24, so yeah, that does hit. He has to step. He has to move one square. F yeah. Closer. Yeah. That's no problem. So yeah, that is a thir thirteen points of damage, which is definitely enough to take that wraith out. It had one hit point left. <laughs> That's going to be it for Vulcan. And Eloise, you're up next. Yeah. I am. Yeah, I'm going to um, go ahead and cast Frostbite at um, this one over here. Oh, whoops, why didn't it ping? Here we go. This one over here. As soon as I find it in my. How far? How far yeah, how far? Does 60. That go? Okay, yeah, you're 60 good. feet. Needs to make a con save. Ugh. I keep rolling. Poop. Well, that's an eight, so that's a failure. Six cold damage. Six cold damage to the sword wraith. I am I am rolling crappier damage on these ca on all of my spells since before I leveled up high enough to be rolling more than one <laughs> dice with them. <laughs> Gotta love it. <laughs> you doing anything else for your turn? Um, I don't really have anything that's bonus action-y. Um, and nobody's close enough for my one bonus action to work, so nah. So fair enough. Okay. So, top of the order, blood from a stone. What you doing? We will, we will move in through this little stall here and since he was hidden from him before, he's just going to kind of pop up and shoot this guy. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll try Sharpshooter again. We're just going to get this over with. Hopefully we actually get good rolls this time. Yeah, 21 minus 5. Uh, what, 16? 16 just hits. 
Is that with the minus two to AC? So they have an 18 AC? Damn. Oh, well, yeah, that's right. I did forget about that. So no, it, but it does hit no matter what. Oh. Okay. I was going to say, these are hardier bastards than I would have <laughs> thought. All right, we'll take that. All right, that is 27, 37, 39. Yeah, definitely enough to take this guy out. Yeah. Uh, and then that was, what, 10 feet? So 5, 10... 15. He's going to get up here and get in position for the other two. Okay. What are those in the center? Like uh, yeah. kiosks or something? They're T7 table. table. What's that? I was curious about the, the pink things in the middle. Are those like fruit stands? What are those? Uh, yeah. These are just stalls. Like th This is a stall full of po broken pottery and stuff like that over here. Okay. It's a 27 to hide from those other two. Okay. Apollyon, you're up next. Alright. You know what I'm about. Let's attack these jabronis. Who are you attacking? Uh, this one right in front of me. I'm gonna go... Uh, what the heck? We'll go reckless attack. This one? Or this one? This one right here. Okay, so perfect. Top. Go for it. Twenty-five. Definitely hits. That's thirteen damage total. Thirteen points of damage. And I'll swing again. Twenty-seven. Oh yeah, definitely hits. Seventeen damage this time. Nice. Cutting through him. Yeah, right, he's, he ain't up. looking great, but he's still up. All right, third attack. Nineteen. Yeah, definitely hits. 14 points of damage. I'm getting lucky on those Ooh, D4s. Four, yeah. Great. Another huge swing from Apollyon cutting through this creature. It's barely maintaining its uh, physical uh, uh, physicality at this point, but it is still up. It is still alive. You just did 44 points of slashing damage. Hell yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> and I'll end my turn. Okay. Yeah, no, none of those were criticals either. No. Okay, that's it for Apollyon. Next, we come to the guy who you just was swinging at. Oh, God damn it. Yeah, that's no criticals, and he's not even raging. Uh, roll 20 keeps... Uh, messing up on me, so I had to re-roll. Or restart it. Give me a second. Refresh the page. Yep, refreshing the page. Quite a long time ago, way back in history. Uh, I hate that song. Hell yeah, I love it. <laughs> oh my god. There we go. That's a 14 to hit. I don't know why was it. Shouldn't have been a disadvantage. So that's just a regular 24. So yeah, that would have hit. 11 points of slashing damage to you, Apollyon. Actually, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to... Give, say we're going to go on break real quick because I need to step away. I'll be right back.
Woo -woo. All right, so Vale is going to command the zombies to charge and attack. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Um, would that be dex or strength? A ten and a seven. <clears throat> All right, perfect. And then uh, the skeleton will shoot a short bow. Yeah, uh, that's going to be a crit for 10 points of pierce here. All I needed was a little whiskey. <laughs> According to Liam, it fixes all woes. Alright, and then uh, Vale's going to pop up, and although he knows it's not going to be the, the most uh, damage, he is going to cast... Actually, you know what? he's going to do one more, um, one more magic missile spell at him. Uh, five, six, ten damage force. Uh, the one I just shot, uh, we'll go with the slowed one right here. Either it didn't really matter. Did I lose you? <laughs> Huzzah! That's my turn. I'm gonna tuck back in that little... little, uh, cozy cubby. My safe space. Yeah, absolutely. So that's it for Vale's turn. Next we come to the Sword Wraith, Commander. It is in front of you, Apollyon, and it is taking its swings at you. Let's see. All right. Yeah, it's fine. It's so the first thing it's doing, it's using its Martial Flurry ab Fury ability, which, like I said, um, as a bonus action, it can make a one weapon attack, which deals the, the extra necrotic damage. So that's what it's doing first. That's an eight, which misses. It now has two multi uh, a multi attack, so it's going to take two more swings with the long sword. And that's a sixteen and a thirteen, so they both miss. Um, I hate to do this, but I'm pretty sure all your attacks had advantage. Why is that? I used reckless attack last turn. Did you? Okay, then yes, they w they would have gotten advantage on those. It did. Yes, I definitely did. Okay, so I'm gonna make the Marshall flurry. Well, let's see. Just roll three more times. Well, I'm gonna say the eight and the sixteen were for the the bonus attack, just to make it easier. 
So then the first, then his regular attack, the first one was a 13 at advantage. The second attack was a 14, which missed again. Then uh, one more swing with the longsword. That's a 24 to hit. 24 hits. So five more points of slashing damage. Okay. We'll leave it at that. Yeah, that's it. That's all you got! That's it for his abilities, yeah. So, next we come to Liam. What are you doing, Liam? What are you doing? Oh, we're running up here. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Can I move through the zombies? Yeah, I'll allow you to push past the zombies. Why not? 30, 30 45 to get here. Up to Mr. Wraith, man. Two quick strikes. Uh, well, the 30 hits. Oh, shit. Ooh, nice. 20 points Ooh. for that first attack. Nothing for the 14 doesn't hit, right? Nope, didn't hit. All right. And then followed it up with a flying headbutt. Fun. Yep, definitely hits. Nine points of bludgeoning damage for the headbutt. Then, uh... Looking up at Polly and seeing how grotesque this monster is moving ten feet away. <laughs> yeah, probably. Okay, um, Vale, it's your owl again. All right, are you going to make another perception check? Yes, I will. And that is going to be... A 17. Okay. With a 17, you do see through your owl that a sword wraith has flown into its line of sight down the alleyway. And it is paused. And it seems to be looking in the direction, not at you, at the owl, but in that direction. Okay. Good to know. Could it be looking at the 20 foot tall minotaur? No, it's not. It doesn't have vision on that whatsoever. <laughs> That's it for the owl's turn. I keep forgetting to put Vulcan in the right order, so I'm going to do that after Eloise's turn. Um, <laughs> but Vulcan is going to move so he can get a clear view, because the pollen's kind of big in the way. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25... 30 feet right here, and he's going to lob a produce flame. He's going to produce some flames in his hand, and he's going to just throw it at the um, at the Sword Wraith Commander. Oh, that's an 11. He completely misses. The fireball goes flying over the head of the thing and smashes into the, w the wall opposite. That's it for his turn. Eloise, you're up next. Um, I am... Ooh, so sorry. I'm gonna go ahead and... Uh, go over here behind this rock. Hopefully giving me some cover. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead... And uh, drop... There's... There's no one left that I have slowed that is there, so I don't need to concentrate on it anymore. Definitely not. <laughs> um, and I am gonna go ahead and... Oh, shoot. Wait, how close am I? Yeah! I'm also going to try to lob some fire. A fireball at this person. I like it. So you're producing some flames as well? Yeah. Where is it in my thingy? There it is. Number one. Boop. Wow. <laughs> please don't no. be sucky roll. Please don't no. be a sucky roll. Hey. 
21 points of damage. This thing, you're, you lob this ball of fire, it goes arcing over Apollyon, drops down, smashes into this creature, and explodes, doing a massive amount of damage. It's barely able to hold on at this point. <laughs> I can imagine just... Vulcan, did you see? Did you see? Did you see? Um, I'm just gonna kind of go eep and really duck as much as I can behind this big rock. <laughs> yeah, I'd say you probably have partial cover behind that big rock there. Don't see me, don't see me, don't see me. I'm invisible. I like it. <laughs> okay, blood from a stone. It's your turn. I guess he'll just kind of pop out and get a view around everything that's in his way. <laughs> Just take a shot at this thing. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna. S you're taking your shot, and that's that's fine. It's a little weird, and it's kind of difficult. He's got he's got partial cover here. Oh, just I gonna can keep uh, sharpshooter though. Yeah, that's sharp true. Sharpshooter. Sharp never mind. You have sharpshooter. No. That's right. No. Yeah, never mind. You're good. Yeah. We'll just take a uh, regular shot at him. I ignore partial cover. <laughs> Yep. It, it it doesn't matter. You've got he has what? six points of health left. So blood from a stone. Just go ahead and tell us. Go ahead and tell us uh, how this looks. Well, he's just running out. These all the creepy dead guys in front of him. He just takes that shot right over their shoulder, and I guess it's, it's they they just dissipate into nothingness when it hits them, right? So it almost yep. looks like yeah, pretty bolt, much. Just, the bolt of energy passes through it. And it's just like you can see from where it hits, it just dissolves outwards. It just disappears. I like it. And with la that, the last of these sword wraiths are now gone. And you're out of combat. And I'm going to kind of peek up over the rock and, and stage whisper, We should go find the cleric place. Yeah, let's get moving. Let's get out of here. So I'm going to uh, flag everyone and just kind of press my finger over my lips in a shushing motion and uh, look through the eyes of Jareth and see what... Um, does he see that wraith still still looking this way, or what does he see? So um, by the time you do see that, you, you're continuing to look through your, your owl's eyes, and you do see that the sword wraith has moved 5, 10, 15, 20, 25... 30 feet this way. 15, 20, 25. And there's another that has joined it in the in the, um, the alleyway, heading in your direction. Okay, so I, with my hands, I gesture two more on their way, and I gesture to, for everyone to hide. Maybe we can get an ambush on these guys if they come into view. View. I think it'd be better to absolutely avoid them. They're just patrolling the city. If they don't see us, they won't attack. <laughs> Wait, what, which what, way does this point, point they come from? from? They coming from up here? Well, Vale yeah. knows where they are. Um, That's why he said he pointed which he direction. Said. Then yeah, uh, to the north, up in this area, you can okay. see. Because yeah, so we had two alleys to choose from there. Um, Halloween, could you do that that blessed trick you do with your staff, the the stealthing thing? What about all the zombies? We need to be quiet if, uh, if at all possible. We can get through this town. We don't need to fight everything. They'll keep coming. It's about that time that Apollyon, um, the spell ends and you do shrink down. Okay. Ah, back to my good old self. <laughs> lead the way, Liam. Yeah, I'm gonna lead them away from where they're coming at us, and then I'll try and start heading in a direction towards the towards the uh, spire that I. I know I've seen at least from a distance. Yeah. Okay. So, um, casting Paths Without a Trace um, out of Eloise's staff, all of you kind of hunker together with her and try to be as stealthy as possible and head out of the market in the direction that Liam 
tells you all to go. So everyone, go ahead and make your stealth checks real quick. Um, you add the, the plus 10 because of uh, Eloise's spell. One, 24. Eloise, I'll Nice. Right. 27. 34. A 19 for Vale and. An 18 for the skeleton. And a 17 for these Okay, so you're you're all fairly stealthy and trying to keep as quiet as possible. Luckily, the staff does negate most sound that's coming out of it, and you're all trying to huddle together and keep down as you make your way towards the near alleyway. Now, Liam, you've never actually been inside the temple. You've only passed it by the once uh, when you first arrived in town, but it was along the path that you took to reach the monastery up on the top of the mesa. Fortunately, you do have a pretty good memory for places you've been before, don't you? <laughs> Extremely good. It's yeah. Actually, yes. So, you are able to lead the group in a direct path along the same route, if you'd like to do that. You remember passing it about a dozen or so blocks to the east. Um, it kind of... The, 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 the town curves around the mesa and starts kind of climbing it a, a little bit in a spiral till it gets about three quarters of the way up and then up top the last leg is just a path till it reaches the top where the monastery is. Right. I imagine with, uh, with Bill and the owl we could use him as a detector and every once in a while stop, see where the nearest ones are, take paths around them. If we, if we take our time, I think we could get through this without engagement pretty easily. Well, well, we're about to find out, aren't we? Always afraid of commitment, Liam. Okay. Speed, baby. You're not at Half-Life. No, that was a, um, that was a engagement joke. <laughs> oh, I got it. I was trying to brush it off. <laughs> okay, I like it. But um, your group does continue to hurry onward, and you're heading in the direction of where Liam tells you is, you know, the the, the temple. Now, go ahead, Liam. Uh, while you do remember where you're going, and you're, you are leading them in that direction. Um, Go ahead, you make a perception check since you're in the lead, and Jareth as well can also make perception checks, tr um, trying to guide everybody along this path. I'm gonna oh. What's up, Eloise? Nothing. Before he, I was trying to say before he rolled that I was gonna give him some guidance, but he don't need it. I'll take a D4. It might be one more thing I could see if that's what, something you want to do. Little Matt, let's <coughs> see. Yeah, it's, if, if, you were, if you do it before the roll, I'm fine. But after the roll... How much he could give it to Blood to look for the stuff he was looking for before? the Like a jewelry shop or something with the symbol of the guild? The syndicate and that guild. Yeah, that's fine, I suppose. So go ahead and make your perception check as well. You're looking for something specifically. Yeah. Um, Liam, you're leading um, the group fairly quickly, and you make it down your a first block and a half or so till you spot um, ahead, just, just at the edge of your vision, two of those wraiths beginning to turn a quarter. You caution everyone to get quiet, and you push everybody into a nearby alleyway, and you wait and watch as those uh the wraiths are stop for a moment kind of hover there for a little bit and then continue on heading in the same direction you were so you you cost can't have everybody duck down the alleyway turn to the left a little bit and kind of be start leading them on a different route go ahead and make another perception check that was a 22 for bloods Okay. 
so blood specifically, as you're going down that first block and a half, you're you're kind of look, keeping your eye out looking for shops. And not a lot of the shops are um, are labeled, but a few of them are. You do spot a blacksmith shop um, at right as um, Liam grabs everybody and pulls you into the alleyway you do spot that uh, another block up ahead there is a sign that is 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 very typical for a blacksmith shop um i have it written down what its name is but it doesn't matter right now um but you do see that there um and then he pulls you into the alleyway so you didn't really see much more beyond that do i have guidance on this perception check if you want it, you can have it. Yes. It's a cantrip, tap, baby. Tap, 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 <laughs> Oops, uh, it's me and nine. Jareth doing perception for this, or is this on the Yes, medium? Jareth can as well. So, oh. uh, ten. <laughs> ten across the board. Okay. Oh. Um, you, you, you don't see anything. Um, it is getting darker. I will. I will point out um, the the sky has gone from from the oranges and reds of um, growing dusk to the dark purples and blues of it's going to be dark soon. Just so you all all are aware. And Liam, taking the lead, continues to guide the path. Jareth overhead is circling, um, keeping an eye out. Um, the zombies are carrying you. Veil, um, so you can keep your eyes going through Jareth's at this point. You don't yep. see you don't see any any of the wraiths on, on your path, and you do make it another block or so um, as you're heading down. However, um, Liam, you know that you have to turn at this one point to start making your way out around the side of um, of the city, and as you're turning a corner, you all stop, and you're going to see this. Damn it. Because y'all rolled like shit. Hey, we got yeah. at least two encounters. That's good. Oh, where are we? I'm getting ready to move you. Oh, okay. Just I was say, I see black, dude. I'm not. It's like, oh, we're really fucked if we don't see anything. <laughs> I mean, we didn't roll that once. We just see the insides of our clothes. Closed. Somebody cast <laughs> darkness on the whole. Yeah. So you should be able to see now. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And you, yes. you're you're rounding a corner uh, in an alleyway onto a main thoroughfare, and you just stop as you all see there is a wraith right here with its back to you and two wraiths right here, also with their back to you. You have half a second to react, but I need everybody to roll for initiative. They have not seen you yet, but you have one, you have the your initiative to determine who's going first. Oh. Beat me, bro. Five. Hmm. Seventeen. Where'd uh, Jarek go? Uh, might not have been there. Give me one second. I'll get him on. Oh, I'm just like scanning a tap. Probably in there. It's weird. I rolled a seven for initiative. Sorry, guys. So would we get if their backs turn? Would we be able to get a, like a shot off before the combat would start? You're going to get a sneak attack round on them. Just because you came upon them right before they're unaware. Gotcha. Or at, well, actually, no. Sorry. You're not getting a sneak attack round. Whoever get rolled higher than them has an action before them. Well, nobody did. Did everybody get on there? Oh, I guess I'm going to do that. I'm my character. Sorry. I had a seven for initiative. What about Vulcan? Uh, Jack got a 20. Eloise is on the list. Eloise got an 8, but I guess when we moved, I didn't check to make sure that my character was still clicked. Okay. 
Okay, so hold on. Yeah, this is gonna take a second. So, Eloise, what did you get? Eight. Um, Jareth got a 20, you said. Vale, what did you get? Uh, five. Okay. Yes, they're on there correctly. Yeah, they are. It looks like they are. It's just, I guess, you need to add Vulcan, too. up our ah hey, he went right with tradition i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> still a little woozy from getting shot out of the sky i guess oops do it again if i got the chance well maybe eloise comes <laughs> by it honestly you know like it's it's a learned thing to just have really shitty initiative last time his initiative was 20. I know. <laughs> just, just fucking with you. I was hoping to get a rise out of you saying, I'll just have to shoot him out of the air again, maybe. I just want to see if he'd react. <laughs> Kyle laughed. <laughs> I know you're going for a rise, though, so I just wanted to see what she was going to do. Okay. So it looks like we are starting things right off with the Sword Wraith Commander. Who right up here. Yeah, he as you guys were t um, going around that corner, you're all being fairly quiet, but not quiet enough because you walked right into this. So he d you guys unfortunately did not get the sneak attack for on him first. He turns towards you all. And it looks like Vulcan is right in front. Yes. So he's swarming over to them. Let's see. As his bonus action, he's doing his martial flurry thing. Ooh. Yeah, shouldn't have, shouldn't have been an advantage, but that was definitely a crit. <sighs> Who's he swinging at? At Vulcan. Vulcan. So thirty two total points of damage onto Vulcan with a critical hit. Ouch. Where did he get the 2d8 from? Because he was doing his martial flurry ability, which allows him to um, add a 2d8 necrotic to it. Ooh, ouch. So that was his bonus action. Now with his action, he's making two swings with a longsword. Good. Wow. Yeah. Another critical hit. Ouch. Oh my god. Whew. Ten more points of slashing damage on Vulcan, who's uh, up there in front, and he ain't looking great. Well, I mean, he's not horribly hurt, but he ain't looking great. Your blood mother. I did more damage than that. You're doing good, buddy. Wow. Yeah, so that's it for... Just remember, what comes around I know, comes I around. Know, so the next gotta... time your family is in this, hey there, it's anesthetic. Be, it's it's uh, all thanks for you're jumping back in again. You and yes, you can family, give inspiration so, uh, to somebody if you want to. Is and I still aren't on initiative. We're a, she's an eight. I'm a seven. Yeah, I see Eloise in there. It's just not reflecting on ours, Liam. Okay. So just know that you both go in turn before Vulcan. What was she? What was Eloise again? Eight. Yeah. Can you see it now? Yes, I can. Yeah. Yep. And then Liam was seven. 
And does, do you not see Liam on there? No. 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 Click your token again. That's like click your token again and then click initiative again. No, I got it. It's fine. Then it's, it's just fine. change the number. It's fine. I fixed it. Okay. So, yeah, the Sword Wraith went first. Next, we come to Jareth. So, Jareth, what are you doing? Uh, <clears throat> Jared, Jareth is going to go um, swoop down and distract the Sword Wraith, kind of flap at his face and uh, fly away. I do a flyby. Absolutely, See, Anna. Uh, you can give can, inspiration to Elvis. Give a little distraction for the next person who shoots him. We've okay. already got advantage on him because he did that martial thingy. Oh, that's right. Well, he already did it. <laughs> yep, that's fine. Sorry. I forgot about that. That was my fault for not paying attention. No, so, you're good, bud. Eloise, the gods are apparently looking on down on you with favor, and you have inspiration. Uh-oh. Yeah. Anesthetic in uh, chat is giving you inspiration for your next turn. Oh. Guys, gotta save my dad. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Nice. Next up, we have Apollyon. What are you doing? All right. Um, I'm going to bonus action rage. And as part of my rage, or as part of the bonus action, I can instinctive pounce. Move up to half of my speed. So I'm going to pounce on this guy right here. And then I attack love it twice okay. with my scimitar of speed. So Apollyon just does a gigantic leap, jumping like a Jedi up towards the Sword Wraith and begins swinging wildly with that scimitar. A 23 is definitely going to hit. Eight slashing damage. Uh, plus this, so 12. 12 points of slashing damage. And the second attack. 24. Definitely hits. Uh, that was an advantage with uh, Jareth's health, right? It was advantage because he, he used the, his own ability. But it's like uh, reckless for him. And it's advantage no matter what with that. It's yeah. like triple advantage, but yeah. It's so, still hit. everybody gets yep. advantage. So, uh, 12 and 12, so 24 points of damage total that turn. I like it. Alright, that's, uh, that's what I got. Two big swings from Apollyon. Next up, we come to Blood from a Stone. So, what you doing? Uh, yeah, well, he's got advantage on this guy, so he's just going to take a shot at him. Absolutely. Uh, I don't know, remember what this thing's AC is, so... Yeah, well, you know what, fuck it. We got advantage, we're going for sharpshooting. We'll see if we hit. Nope. Definitely not. Your arrow Even... just goes, or your bolt of energy just goes whizzing by him and misses entirely. I don't think it would have hit even with a regular shot. Uh... He's going to step here around the corner, uh, roll a quick stealth, just because he's a little he's squishy. Uh, 18, wow, the, uh, the fucking four shit rolls in a row, well, the 17 went bad, but yep. But still, an 18's not bad. Vale, you're up next. All right, um, <clears throat> Vale is going to command the zombies as a bonus action to attack. Five and twenty. Uh. All right, so that's going to be. Six slams. Uh, <clears throat> my lowest, I'm 
Is it my a sixteen? Does a sixteen hit? A sixteen just hits. So the sixteen of the twenty. Okay. So, yep. So it's gonna be two hits. Twenty-one is going to be five bludgeoning damage. The sixteen is going to be seven bludgeoning damage. Okay. Uh, so your zombies all pummel into this creature one after another. Two of them managing to hit, doing very minor damage to the creatures. Yep. And then um. The skeleton's going to hit him with five points of piercing damage okay. from the short bow. Or at least half. <clears throat> yeah, or at least half. Just chipping away, you know? Absolutely. And then uh, Vale will uh. burn one uh, one magic missile uh, spot from his wand for uh, 11 points of uh, force damage. 11 more points of force damage striking into this uh, Sword Wraith commander. Did he do all the zombie attacks at advantage? I did not. Because they get advantage. No, technically that's true. Because yeah, it's Shoot, just I like forgot. it's like that, you know, Apollyon's Reckless thing, isn't it? That, that, yeah. That's yeah, you're right. So, he does. See, not, again, not paying attention to that thing. I, I forgot about that ability. All right. Um. So, did you want me to just re-roll? Okay. Some so, of what them, we're gonna, how, how do, what we're gonna do? do is the first two was the first attack. The second. Yep. The second two was the second attack. The third two was the third attack. So, you make three more attacks okay. with advantage. Yep. So you're gonna take one of those uh, damages out. Yeah, I've already calculated that. Okay. Um. So three more attacks, right? At advantage? Yeah, three more attacks at advantage. Ooh. Yeah, I like it. They all three hit. All three yes. hits. Oh, nice. So that's going to be 18 points of damage. A bludgeoning. Or at least half. <laughs> Yep, so six more points of bludgeoning damage to the, this wraith as these zombies are all just surrounding him and pounding into, into him with their fists. And then you, I did calculate your uh, magic missile damage as well, so that's all I'm taking into account. Are you doing anything for all your right. move? Nope. Uh, actually, maybe I'll get uh, a move. A little closer to Liam. And then I'm done. Okay. Next up, we come to the Sword Wraith Warriors who are down here near the end. First one. Go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 to right about here. And it's making a arrow shot at the zombie in front right here. That's a five, so that misses. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty. For that guy, he's doing the exact same thing. That's a nine, so that's a miss as well. That'll hit. That'll oh, that hit. That's a uh, eight. Yep. 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 You're right. So that does hit. Didn't we collect a bunch of armor for your zombies, Doyer? We did. I have not. Um, but next time I get time, I'll outfit them. Like Nine we, I, remember we, I remember we stripped a lot of dead bodies. You did? Yeah, I, I have them, I have them all listed. Yeah, I have them all listed. You know, they, they just didn't fit right, so I'm going to wait. <laughs> now blood just feels extra dirty. That's fine. But uh, nine more points of piercing damage to that zombie up ahead. Okay, so he is down to one. Next up, we come to Eloise. What you doing, Eloise? You do have advantage. Yeah. The gods are favoring mm -hmm. you in this moment. So what are you doing? Yeah, I'm uh, squeezing in between Vulcan and Apollyon here, if they'll let me. And I'm going to go ahead and, with some primal savagery, take a swipe at this mofo. Now, I'm going to point out that everybody is surrounding this guy right now. I will allow you to move in there, but you cannot remain there. No, yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. Just so you know. So go ahead mm -hmm. and attack with your primal savagery. 26. Definitely hits. 15 points of acid damage. 15 points of acid damage. Describe how your primal savagery looks for us. Um, my horns kind of seem to, like, grow and sharpen. My claws definitely grow and sharpen, and um, my eyes take on, like, this greenish hint to them, and I just go for the throat. Yeah, I love it. And you slash through this creature, ripping away at its ghostly throat, doing a decent amount of damage to it. Um, you, uh, you do have to move out of that position, yep. however. So where are you moving to? I'm just gonna move right back okay, where so I was. That, that is provoking an attack of opportunity for him. Mm -hmm. and that's a 15 to hit. Uh, that misses. Nice. And yeah. the gods are calling down to you. Yes, go Eloise. That's it for your turn. So Liam, what you gonna do? Uh, all right, so going to walk up here, take a boost off of these zombies, walk on the shoulders of these zombies, come down and do a headbutt onto this fucker off of the zombies. You know what? You, you know, know what? what? Hey, um, give me an acrobatics check to jump off the shoulders of these zombies. Absolutely, you got it. Natural 20. <laughs> Fuck yeah, you do. No problem oh, whatsoever. You you just, 20. Okay, good, good, good. Parkour off these zombies, jumping, doing a massive flip, swinging with your with your weapon, whatever you're doing. Doing a headbutt straight down onto this thing. Uh, arm strike as a headbutt. Uh, that does uh, 10 bludgeoning, and I would like him to make a constant because this is going to be a stunning strike. I want to freeze this guy. I like it. That's a 19. That's gonna save. That's unfair. Right. Do I have uh, advantage on my attacks here? Yeah, you do, because this thing is That's surrounded. Happened. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, then, doing longsword again, two quick attacks. That should do. And don't forget to call out your numbers. All right, that's 24 and a 21 to hit, doing 12 and 14, so a total of 26 slashing to him. 26 uh, slashing, nice. Make one more con save for me, please. Will do. One more con save, one more key point goes away. And that's a 17. He saves again. He Good job. He's a sturdy, sturdy guy. Yeah, okay. Uh, then I'm gonna jump into this little area over here. I like it. You go diving in through, from through the window, or actually no, around through the door, and you find a bit of a storage area. Uh, boxes and crates and uh, bags and sacks all kind of piled up on, on themselves. That's it for Liam's turn. Next we come to Vulcan. Vulcan. Let's see. Are you talking? You're muted. No, I'm just looking at something real quick. Yeah, I know that guy's gonna make more of them. I really wanted to freeze him. Okay. Sorry, I'm just I'm looking at things that Vulcan can do real quick. Because he's kind of thinking the same way you are, Liam. 
This guy's this guy can ca um, summon more of them. I don't want to deal with this right now. He's gonna cast Polymorph. Is a wisdom saving throw from that guy. I was thinking about it, but I wanted to hit him more. Yeah, that's a five, so it fails. So Vulcan looks out at, at this uh, at the sword wraith, and he mutters to himself, "I think I just want you to be a cute little bunny." And he snaps his fingers, and what was a big blue shadowy wraith creature reforms into a cute little bunny rabbit. Oh, don't shoot this one! Yeah, and for his uh, free action, he's just gonna call out, now none of y'all hit this thing right now! We need to get out of here! Damn good shot. Damn good shot. <laughs> this thing is now a bunny rabbit. Because why the fuck not? It's 300 feet away. In the bush. <laughs> and then he just looks over at you, <laughs> you hear you muttering, and just says, Fuck you, Bill from a stone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Vale. It is your turn. The spectral right, um, uh, creature is now a spectral bunny. Hmm. I'm gonna issue these guys over here. So, um, they're going to attack this guy right here. All of them. The guy on the top, if you didn't see where I put the cursor. Um, it's at regular, right? Not advantage. Yeah, this would not be an advantage. So, one, two... I'm just going to start clicking the ones that did hit. 16 or higher, right? That's 31 bludgeoning damage. Or half. I like it, yeah. So 31 points bludgeoning damage, and yet yeah, it is halved on, I assume, this guy right here. Yeah, the guy on the top. <clears throat> and the short bone missed. And then, uh. Vale is going to. Uh. He's actually just going to toll the dead, so give me a DC 16 wisdom save. You got it. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a failure. That's a zero. <laughs> a nat zero. So that's going to be 11 necrotic, which I'm assuming doesn't go all the way through. It, it, it is half, so another five points of damage. Alright, and Vale is going to move right here behind the Goliath, and he is done. Okay. That's it for that's turn, for Vale's turn. Now we come to the cute, harmless little bunny, who, um, well, looking at you, Apollyon, it, it doesn't know it's really a bunny. It doesn't really understand what's happening. All it knows is that suddenly you got bigger, and you're, you're, you're there, and there's your boot. So it's going to make an attack at you as a bunny. <laughs> All right, bring it. So this is going to be a d20 minus three because I assume that's what a bunny has for an attack, and that's a one. Negative one. Yeah. yeah. You need the holy hand grenade. 
Yeah, so it comes running up at you, tries to bite at your boot. Its jaws just kind of clunk on the, the toe of your boot, and it's just kind of stuck there. Why the hell not? <laughs> and that's it for its turn. Jareth is up next. Uh, Jareth... <laughs> Uh, Jarrett's going to swoop down and uh, give advantage to the one that I've just pummeled with the zombies. Fly back. Absolutely. Uh, my, I don't have um, the light for Jarrett, the um, lighting, dyna dynamic lighting. done. Okay. That's it for Jareth's turn. One second, please. Next up, we come to Apollyon. What is Apollyon doing? All right. Um, right in front of you like, is a cute little bunny that just bit your toe. I would to like to... You got told not to hurt the bunny. Over here, and as I take that first step, I'm going to try to just kind of propel the bunny up in, into the air. You propel the bunny in. up into the air? Yeah. Okay. I like it. The bunny yeah. goes flying through the air as you uh, kick off, running towards it. Um, let's see what the bunny can do. Probably not much. <laughs> yeah, but the fall damage is going to make it turn back into a wraith. Yeah, it rolled a 10, so it does go tumbling, um, f arcing up about 5 feet and landing with a thud. So where does it land? It's going to land right about here, right on top of that body. Um, I'm trying to think of how much damage a bunny would take from being kicked off about five feet and go, go into an arc and land on a dead body. How much damage would it take? Not much. 1d4 minus 5. I doubt that. <laughs> Does the body might cushion its fall because it's softer than the ground. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna say. I think it would like to. It's actually gonna. Damage. It's probably gonna be one d four minus two. It's not a lot of damage, but a bunny only has one hit. So if it does take any yeah. damage well, whatsoever, it. it will do it. So I'm gonna roll it one d four minus two. I feel like that's pretty fair. That's fair. All right, sure. Yeah, and it rolled in that four, so that was two. So yeah, this bunny goes arcing Whoa. off, landing on the ground with a thud, taking that one point of damage, and it instantly poofs back up, and it is now a wraith once again. I had a flashback of Apollyon in his interrogation tactics. All right, well, that changes what I was going to do now. Uh, one. Does Apollyon just no longer listen to what any of them What did you think was going to happen? I just wanted to propel him through the air. I wasn't trying to hurt him. You're a giant minotaur. Propel <laughs> through the air. Coming down the, from that is going to hurt anyone. anyone. I just want yeah, to get just the trying to hurt a little, little bit. bit. Being my 15 foot a little bit. I was about to do. Hey. 
Well, what? Just so, like so, um, what is it you're going to do, Apollyon? Fuck it. Now I'm just gonna attack him. <coughs> I was gonna cast a spell and do some cool shit, but nope. Attack. Reckless Aww, attack. Aw, no cool shit. You can still do cool shit. Yeah, but I'm raging. I have to attack. Uh, fair. 27 to hit. Definitely hits. Sixteen damage. Sixteen damage to this guy. He ain't looking great, that's for sure. Attack a second time. Twenty-three to hit. Twenty-three definitely hits. Another seventeen damage. So, uh, I'm poofing, rage! so poofing out this uh, little bunny into a giant wraith. And Apollyon immediately turns around and begins spinning, slicing once, twice. Second attack is just enough to take it out. So Apollyon, how does that look? Yeah, I uh, I kick him into the air, and as he's like floating there, I like turn my head and see. And as soon as he hits the ground and poofs back into his normal form, I'm like jumping up and slam and. Uh, striking straight down with my scimitars and like kind of land on top of them I like it and with that the, the sword wraith s dissolves down into a mist down into the ground and disappears well, I don't know what your definition of cool shit is but that was some pretty cool shit uh -huh. <laughs> yeah <Why> just <laughs> saying <laughs> okay blood from a stone you're up next Alright, 1, 2, 3, 5, 10, 15, 20. Oh, you know, we'll get a little one. Take a shot at this guy right here. Uh, I guess would I get like a flank since he's got enemies up in his face, or since we're yeah, both fake from the. Yeah, right. uh, you're fine. You All can right. have advantage. Well, you get advantage anyway, right? Well, because kind of there's an ally? Yeah, well, I mean, I just. That's, that just gives me sneak attack. Oh, I mean, if, yeah, so. Uh, 20. Does hit? Which guy are you hitting? The one right here. Okay. So that was 5, 10, 15, 20. That's 20. All right, so then that's 22 plus 5, 27. Seven. 27 points of damage. Right, so that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. I'm going to use disengage to slip past him while continuing with my feline agility. So 35, 40, 45, 50. 55, and we're gonna just sneak right in here. So he does. 100 rate, look up at you. I disengaged as I went past him. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Okay, that's it for that guy's turn. Veil, you're up next. I am? Looks like it. Um, uh, right. What's that? The, the, it looks like the Wraith's turn on, on this yeah. turn order. Yeah, it looks like the Wraith, and then there's me and Liam and Vulcan and then Vale. Oh, my bad. Sorry, yeah, I don't know how that got mixed up. No problem. Yeah, I see the Wraith. <laughs> yeah, it is the Wraith's turn. My bad. Fuck it. That's right. I would have... <laughs> yep. uh, well, well, now do damage to they, us. Yep, now do damage to the zombies, because zombies are in front. Uh, why is it? Uh, it rolled a 25. I accidentally hit it into GM. Yeah, that works. That hits. Yeah. So that's nine points of damage to the wraith in front. Um, the, the zombie, the which zom one? Yeah. So this wraith is attacking this zombie. Okay, yep. So nine points nine. of damage to him. Yep. It is now going to use its Martial Fury ability, so as a bonus action, it's going to make one more weapon attack. Same guy. Okay. Uh, God damn it, it should not be an advantage. So that was a seven hit. Seven does not hit. Okay. That's it for that guy. Second guy is doing pretty much the same thing on this turn. Uh, action attack, which is a ten. So I assume that hits. Yep. yep. 
So seven points of slashing damage, and then um, as a bonus action, he's using his martial fury ability to make one more weapon attack. That's a 23. So 11 points of slashing damage. Both of those attacks to that guy right there. Okay, so um, that one's going to... I got to roll to see if he drops or not. Um, DC 15 plus the damage taken. Uh, constitution, so... I took 11. Yes. So he gets back up with one hit point. Well, cause, um, it is... So, uh, is damage, if, it, if the damage reduces the zombie to zero hit points, it must take a con make a constitution saving throw with a DC of 5 plus the damage taken. Oh, so no, he doesn't. Yeah, so that would be a 16 he had to roll. Yep, so he, yeah, he got a 14. Okay. So he, one of them drops, so that, that, now that cluster is down to two. Yep. Okay. So that's it on their turn. Both of them have advantage. Uh, or whoever attacks these two have advantage until their next turn, just so you know. Excellent. Oh, really? Hmm. Sorry, which zombies are dead? It's just one of, one of them. Groups. Yeah. Oh. Uh, these are groups of zombies okay. representing this one token. Ah, zombies. okay, okay, okay. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. All right, um, the only way I can hurt more than one of them at a time right now without, you know, making a 40 foot high moonbeam that would alert everything in the city, um, is to go ahead and throw an ice knife. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna throw an ice knife to this one. Um, <coughs> there it is. Twenty-six. Definitely hits. Awesome, awesome. So that one takes three piercing damage, this guy and right then here. yep, and then uh, or no, this guy. Back at the, the bottom back. corner one and then um uh the everyone surrounding oh. that one uh has to make including that <laughs> one has to make a dc 15 dexterity save okay so that's also the zombies in this area yeah. so these uh, that group of zombies there and this group of zombies there all need to make um the dex saving throws as well Fair. yeah uh Damn it. You're collecting bodies, don't worry. I'm just gonna do two, one for each group, and it looks like... Ooh! Oh, well, it's a... 13. Everyone takes nine uh, points of cold damage. Nine points oh of my cold damage. <laughs> I... I'd like to think Vale just looks at her like, fuck! Yeah, he does. Um, like the thing is, drop the smiles all These guys drop unless I do a con save because it took me. I don't even mean, know if it's worth it. Yeah, it would be. No harm in rolling. Yeah. Alright. Nope, oh, well, that one doesn't make it. That's it. He drops. Collecting bodies for you. Okay, that's one last zombie in that group right there. Yeah, but the way the spells work, it's not like a reasserting is a lot easier than creating new ones. But that's it for Eloise's turn, unless you want to do anything with your movement or bonus. Um. No, I think I'm good. Okay, so Liam, you're up next. Hiding in that little storage area. Alright, coming out here, assessing what's been happening since I hid. Uh, come over here. With a little more movement. Still with advantage, yes? Still with advantage. Delightful. 
Long sword! Long sword again! 22 and a nat 20. Okay, go ahead and roll for your first attack. Okay, yeah, 12. That is, not, that is not enough to take it out with that first hit, so go ahead and roll your second damage. Alright. And then another 18 points of damage. Definitely enough to take this guy out. All right, and then the next one, uh, he might get a nice spin kick. Say thanks for watching the show. That's a 26, that should oh, yeah. hit. Oh yeah. Seven to bludgeoning to him. Which is exactly, he had six hit points left. So Liam, describe the situation as you come running out of the storage shed. As I come running out, I see the first one, and I slash upwards at it, seeing it's almost down. Pull out, and I thrust straight through the center of it, damaging it, and ripping it straight through. Then I turn around and see the last one, and realizes I just showed up, and he didn't know what the hell was going on. So I spin around and kick him right in the face as he dissipates into nothingness again. Absolutely, and with that, both of those uh, sword wraiths begin to dissolve downward into the ground, and you are out of combat once again. Okay, now for real, let's get out of here! So what all, What are you guys all going to do? You got a I'm going to pick up the, uh, the zombies that fell and throw them in the uh, portable hole. Okay. We gotta go, we gotta, oh, run. We gotta run. Phil, does your owl see any more uh, any more of these things out there? So I am gonna say it does take you about five minutes to unfold the portable hole and spread it out onto the ground and start dragging the few bodies that you had the of the zombies that you had in and put them into the hole. So while you're doing this, and for that five minutes you can all kind of make a perception check, have Jareth do it with advantage, and all of you kinda of take a look around. Thirteen. Seven. Nineteen. Fourteen. That should not have been an advantage. I need to take that off. That's a fifteen. Okay. So, first I'm going to go to Blood from a Stone, who was hiding in a doorway um, before the, the battle ended. As you're now kind of looking around Blood, you notice boxes and shelves um, of ingredients and a little counter right over here behind you. Um, you seem to be in an apothecary. Ooh. There is a dead body lying on the ground in a dried pool of its own blood right in front of the, um, the, the, the front desk, as it were. And there are bottles of potions and all sorts of ingredients and, and things. Some of them are broken, a few of them are, are not. Um, and it also looks like over here to your left, there is a bit of a back room. Oh, 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 oh. All right, well, Kids on the body. I'm gonna check the body, see for stuff on here, and then I'm just gonna start grabbing all of those potions. Okay, so... <laughs> so, um, Liam, yeah. Apollyon, you, you don't really see a whole lot. You're kind of just staring off into space. Something's caught, Something's your, caught eye your eye in that wall there. It seems to be moving. Um, a big bubble seems to rise up and kind of go around and then disappear, and then in a, f a few spaces away, it rises up again, and it's really, it's super interesting, Apollo. Um, Eloise, you, Liam, are both uh, kind of just keeping an eye out in this area. You're not seeing a whole hell of a lot. Um, there is no movement right now. Nothing's coming, like, just rounding just corners or anything like that. However, Jareth, from above, you're the owl is kind of looking around, um, doing a big white circle, and he can see about two blocks away, there is another group of three wraiths coming, not in this direction, but angling, angling somewhat as it follows um, the alleyway towards you. Right. So, um, blood from a stone. That was to check the body, the 15. With a fi the 15, um, 
You search the body real quick. She does have a pouch on her that contains 110 gold pieces and two platinum pieces. Um, she also has a small key um, around her neck and a little bit of a th- uh, leather thong, just a, a long leather cord uh, with a key around it. Um, she has a silver ring on her pinky finger, um, and she also just has a plain deck at her waist. Okay. Um, she was carrying a satchel, and you kind of rummage through the satchel a little bit as well, and it's mostly clothes. Um, there is some uh, packaged rations and two potions, which you do recognize as lesser healing potions. Now you said there were potions on the counter as well, and stuff like it, some that weren't broken. Yeah, there is. Um, you you get it like without looking. If you just want to grab them, you can grab a total of eight potions from the apothecary. And I guess while he's doing that, he'll just kind of like start doing some click sounds. Going back to his days where he would hunt with his brother, assuming that these people know what the fuck he's doing. Uh, and he's just making those click sounds, saying like, get the fuck in here. And he's, okay. just, so he's um, assuming that they maybe have heard it before. I don't Liam, remember if I've ever done that. Liam, you're kind of you're kind of close there and you're keeping an, uh, keeping an eye out. Uh, make up. What was your perception check? That was a 15. It was a 15, yeah. Yeah, you do hear some odd clicking sounds coming from this building over here. Just very faintly, like... Something like that. Um, can I ask, do I by any chance see any monks laying dead in the streets over in this area? Uh, you do. This guy right here, he is wearing the blue robes. And um, a white belt. Um, if do you want to make a closer examination of them? Yes, definitely. Okay, go ahead. Okay, and make go an investigation ahead. check. You kind of roll them over to look to see who this is. That's a nine after I roll the ten. <laughs> you roll it over, um, and you do recognize the individual. It's it's a half orc. You you didn't really work with him a whole hell of a lot, um, but you do vaguely remember his name as Ixon. Oh, this isn't good. He, he was one of the higher ranking of the monks. If anyone were to survive, I would have put money on this one right here. More click sounds from the building. Anything in his pockets? Um, just um, with a nine, you don't find anything on him. Um, there is no weapons that you see around. Um, it doesn't appear to, that he has a belt pouch or anything like that. Where is everyone? We should get out of here. And I'm going to kind of like start poking my head in because I knew that trying to find those who walked away. Yeah, by this time you probably all have realized that blood has gone. And he kind of steps out from a building over here to your left. Okay. I see hey. him and I start moving hey. towards him. Hey. Path carry. I take off running. It's so like, I got key. Oh, well, yeah, there's some stuff here. I got a bunch of potions. The ingredients, yeah. too. You might find something you need, but... Yeah. There is uh, a lot of stuff in here. I, I will go ahead and say. Um, he just kind of did a, a cursory examination. Just looking around, <laughs> there's a lot of ingredients on yeah. these shelves. There's, the shelves are have kind of... Some of them have been spilled over and... <laughs> uh, ingredients are all over the floor mm-hmm. um, but other things are just in bags or in little boxes and there is quite a bit of stuff you can also see at the other side a lot of broken uh, potion bottles over here that as blood said he did kind of pick through and um, I'm gonna go ahead. sorry go ahead no finish no, I was just saying there's a, a, a door here to a back here okay I'm gonna poke in the back I kind of want to see if I can find like a recipe book for 
for the potions? For this person's potions? Okay. Is the door locked? Um, and no, there was no door. It was just a little okay. back area um, so mm-hmm. that she could go through. And you do see a bookshelf, um, another shelf full of vials and things, and, and clay pots and urns and stuff like that. The table itself right here is covered with um, alchemical ingredients and pestle and mortars and all of the tools that you would typically find in an herbalist kit and in, or an alchemist kit. There's actually one in each uh, strewn about here to make up this table. Um, over here is another table that seems to have like writing implements and things of that nature and, and a few more ingredients and that sort of thing. Um, this is a giant mess. It's just things are strewn all about. Um, there is a table right here and a small uh, a small, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, not a wardrobe, uh, a, a, a dress, not a dresser, like a smaller version of a dresser. Anyway, um, just with the, all the drawers pulled open and pretty much empty other than like socks hanging off of it and things like that. Um, so you said you're looking for a book specifically. Yeah, like a recipe book for, for potions and stuff. Okay, it so doesn't are, particularly have to be this person specific one, but just one in general. Okay, are you looking through the bookshelf or are you looking over the um, table with the writing? I think I'm going to poke uh, look at the table with the writing first, and then uh, I'll take a look at the bookshelf if I don't find anything. Sure, go ahead and make an investigation check. Blood, I, you're, you're kind of going pixelated on me. Um, I didn't yes. catch anything of what you said. <laughs> no, nope, can't hear. Nothing. Turned into a robot. Yeah, he he just he said he's gonna re- reload. So oh, okay. Right so go ahead and roll your investigation to check the table. I was able to use that inspiration, inspiration I got given. given. <laughs> yeah, good idea. Shit. So you do find uh, some papers uh, all over the table. You kind of gather them all up and look through them. And most of them are really more um, notes uh, on finance and business information, uh, purchases, receiving, that sort of thing. Not a lot that's really interesting on there. Although you do find a sickle, just a standard sickle on the table. All right. Shit. All right. Well, I guess I'll go poke at the book shelf if we can. Yep. Go ahead and make another investigation check. I'm so good at those. Seventeen. There you go. Looking through the books, you you're, you do see a lot of books on just herbalism in general, um, mm-hmm. plant identification, things of that nature. One book in particular does call your attention, and it's a big leather-bound book that's very worn and very used. And you you pull it up and open it up and look through it, and there's just it's from front to back, cover to cover, nothing but handwritten notes. And uh, what languages do you speak? Oh dear. Um, common, Draconic, Giant, and Druidic. Okay. So you do not recognize the language written in this book, um, but you do recognize a lot of the drawings that are in there and a lot of the, um, the numbers, um, which kind of give you the idea that this is a big book of, of mostly of recipes. It's a giant cookbook, essentially, of alchemic formulas. Um, unfortunately, you can't read it right now, but that's okay. You might be able to find somebody to translate. It. Yep, I'm taking it. Back. Giant potion cookbook. Yeah. yeah. Can I look around for some uh, some more high quality oil that I can use to make my muscles really shine? I don't see why not. Go ahead and make an investigation check. Oh boy. I almost clicked intimidation. Eleven. So you're kind of nosing around the shop, uh, looking around, and you go around behind 
um, the front desk area in the shop and look behind there. And down at the bottom of the shelf, there is a small vial of what appears to be oil. You pick it up and you look at it, and there's a bit of a shimmer to it. And like a bit of a silvery swirl goes around in this um, oily looking substance. Oh. Oh, baby. This is going to make Apollyon's muscles glow. <laughs> you, you can write down that you have a, a vial of glittery oil. Or are you applying it right now? Oh, God damn it. Nah, I'll wait. I think I know exactly what that is. It's it's not yet time. Uh, Vale's going to scoop this body into the portable hole. Vale, is that really the time or the place for this? <laughs> uh, Falcons. Oh. I ignore him. <laughs> and so back. I need yeah. all the bodies I can get. Uh, what? Vulcan's really trying hard not to want to just shove him in the portable hole and close it up behind him. What I put in our chat was just putting those potions out for Eloise to check, and then I'm going to look for what that key is. <coughs> so you've got, you guys, by the way, I've spent about 20 or so minutes out here um, and looking through this apothecary. And going back to Jareth's role, as you, you all been, he, he's been circling and, and watching, and you do see a group of three more wraiths heading in this general direction. The first group you had seen was coming from from the southwest, heading towards you. This group now is coming from the west. So there are two groups heading in your direction, and right now they're about two blocks. Away. Alright. Uh, finish putting that uh, body in the hole. Fold up the hole nice. And, uh. Is there anything. So, is this like a cash register area right here? Yes, it is. Alright, is there anything underneath, like a small lockbox that the key might have gone to? Um, go ahead and make an investigation check. <coughs> that is a. Natural 20 for 25. Yes, in the bottom of this shelf, tucked in away, you do see a small iron lockbox. So I um, look up at Vale, I mean at uh, um, Blood, and I say, um, I think you might want to look at this and uh, gesture him to, towards the box with the key he got from the lady. Uh, and then I... I Casually, as I'm strolling out, say, uh, better make it fast. We've got enemies approaching two blocks away. And I walk out the door. Right. He'll, he'll go to the box. If I could, I can't move my token at the moment. I don't know why. I might be roll 20 being a pain in the butt. But... Yeah, but you can go <laughs> over there and grab it. Alright. What's, uh, what's in the box? Are you using the key? Is that yeah. What you're doing? Yeah. What's in the box? What's yeah. in the yeah. box? You do open it up, and inside the box, you do find 750 more gold pieces. Oh, oh, oh. 350 Jeez. copper pieces. Yeah, I don't I really feel bad about this, but I don't. So yeah, 750 gold pieces, 250 silver pieces, and 150 copper pieces. Basically, all of the savings of this uh, poor apothecary. She's dead. Uh, where's Vulcan when I do this? Um, at that point, he had actually followed Vale outside okay. the door. Um, all right, we're good. Because he, he's he's more <laughs> right now kind of lecturing. Fail on grabbing people up just off the, the streets randomly. And he's just he, he's just bitching about it the entire time. All right, I just want to make sure. For, for being a linguist and knowing all these languages, for some reason these lectures are just falling on deaf ears. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure that he didn't see me doing that. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna scoop up the um, the potions that. Um, 
blood put down for me to look at, and I'm <laughs> and I'm just gonna stick them in my bag. I'm just like, we have to look at these later. <laughs> Let's keep going. Well, yeah, you can put them in the, the haversack then. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. All right, so I have eight potions of unknown origin. Yeah, you do. Or of unknown and ability. Yeah, you can just say eight potions from uh, Bradfordshire Apothecary. We'll out. figure it out. Have we been splitting up the past couple little sums of gold? I'm just writing it all down. Right? Writing all it all down. Right kind of. It's parties. The party's gold, right? Well, right now, like, once we yeah. Get, once yeah, we get some more, we can find it. Blood. blood, if you're like, up. That, like hide it. Yeah, no, it's just put it in the bag. So, because we don't have time to split shit up. Yeah, and yeah. this has been for like the past like ten sessions, right? Oh no, this, there's this like a the running, first... running no, tally. This is a f no way. Before now, he's been giving everything out. This is the first time we've found anything. So we've been in the fucking mountains for a yeah, while. I thought I don't know. For some reason, I thought there was gold somewhere. In, well, but we in, have to get that exchange in a special spot. We can't just. Oh, uh, okay, all right. But you, you got all that. Remember, like we're not gonna written, forget yeah, about I've it. Yeah, got right? that written down in the haversack. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Okay. Cool. Well, you all step out into the evening. There, which it, it actually is. I meant to say you step out into the street, but as you look up, you realize it is evening. Darkness has fully set upon all of you now, and you're just relying on your dark vision to proceed from here on now. And goggles. Yeah, you do all have goggles of night or dark vision, so you can't see, but you're limited to your 60 feet of vision, as opposed to during the daytime, you do have a much wider range of vision. Do anyway. those do the wraith like glow brighter in the dark, or are they not like actual like glowing blue spectral things? It's just I'm just They're curious. spectral things. Um, you haven't now. Yeah, you, you would have seen it as it's getting darker, and they do have more of a glowy, wispy like appearance. Okay, it. it's faint. It's so they but faint, they but... will be able to tell when we see them. Is what I was yes. curious. They, yes. they, they, they're ghost pirates, not pirate ghosts. <laughs> oh, pirate ghosts! So what are you, so what are you doing? doing? Pirates? Uh, well, we're gonna... Stealthily, I want to stealthily get going back, and we know where that group is, so I want to get lead them away from that group. Absolutely. So go ahead and make stealth checks, everybody. Um, I suppose Eloise still has her, um... I would, if it around. if it's been past the point of, I would have just recast it, so yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Ugh. That's, uh, 29. 18. 32. Yeah, 16 for Vulcan. Vulcan. 28. There's a, uh, a 6. For the zombies, a 16 for this. Oh, wait, you had uh, 10. So 16, 26, and a 13 for me. Okay. With a natural one. So all of you are kind of huddling up together and trying to keep as quiet as possible. Vale definitely is the loudest among all of you, but you're, you're all still within your field, and it does hamper some of your the sound coming from you. And overall, you do continue heading in the direction. Um, more of a what's more of a um, southeastern roll as you're head continuing on through the streets. Now you make it another three, four blocks before, um, with nothing happening whatsoever. You're all scurrying, keeping as quiet as possible. Um, at one point. In, the, in that time frame, you do stop and you see another wraith coming around a corner and you all pause and wait for the thing to pass before you go on again. But luckily with your roles, you, you're generally been able to keep, for the most part, um, unseen. Eventually you get to the point where you can see at a distance the temple and just at the edge of your vision, silhouetted by the moon that is currently beginning to rise. You can see that it is a two-story uh, yellow stone building with a long front that tees off behind it, 
and a high sloped roof of flat tile rocks. The building sits high on a mesa, giving it a long sloped courtyard of rocky soil that gives the temple a very high vantage point of the street below. Y'all, all are, you guys are all currently about a block and a half away at this point, coming up near a turn. Everybody give me a perception check, please. Twenty-two. Two. Fourteen for Jared. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. And a twenty for Val. And a two for Apollyon, I love it. I've rolled bad on every perception check today. With all his extra eyeballs, really? All of you are being very quiet and very, very subtle as you're making your way through the these um, streets. And now a block and a half ahead of you is you can see the grounds of the temple, the gate. There's a large, tall wall along the street with an open gate and a path that leads up a bit of a hill towards that temple. As you get to this point, you're all looking around behind, um, keeping as... as careful a watch as you can. Um, Blood, Vale, and Eloise all spot coming around a corner. A wraith. By itself. Right here. At the edge of your vision. I assume you can all see that? Uh, nope. No. That's past 60. Yeah, I see it. So probably, can you see it right there? No, Vale certainly can, but I, at 60 I can. Yeah. Well, it's it's about right there. Yeah. Um, Vale's able to see it. About 85 feet away. Yeah, here's the edge. From, of from me. So. Okay, so if it's right at the edge of your vision... It's going to be right yeah, about there. We go. Just so you can, yep. just so you can see it. So probably about right halfway point. So right about there. You can kind of see it right there. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So you can see it just at the edge of your vision, coming out of this building, right down here. You spot it there, and you do have a moment where it has not seen you. So all of you have. A time where you can do something if you want. If you want to attack, we'll just roll for initiative and you all get a sneak attack. Or if you'd rather do um, wait and do something else, or just try to run and hide, you can do that instead. What do you guys want to do? I would try and uh, tone to the group that we should try and run and hide. Yeah, we can try. Okay, so what are you doing? We're gonna run and hide. Okay. So there, there are a few buildings over here, over here, and over here that are all open. You can, you can see some of them. So you could go and duck and hide into them. Actually, why don't we just go ahead and <coughs> roll initiative, and that'll give everybody a chance to do whatever they want to do. How's that sound? All right. Um. <clears throat> I'm going to have to get going pretty soon. I'm exhausted. Well, if we want, we can just end things right here and pick it up um, fresh at the beginning of the beginning of. Yeah, that's fine. Yep, yep. yep. Yeah, I'm cool with that. Okay, that's fine then. then. We will go ahead and end things right here because, yeah, it is 10 o'clock. So, 
11 here. <laughs> so for to everyone watching, thank you. Um, we absolutely appreciate it, and we look forward to seeing you next week. So see you again next month. Good night. Peace.